Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And in today's video, it is going to be episode number three in my candle making beginner series. And today we are talking all about wicks. This part of candle making can be really frustrating for us candle makers. And if you're just new to starting, don't be nervous. Don't be like afraid that you're not gonna find the right wick. It just takes practice. It takes a lot of testing and it takes a lot of patience. So just be patient during the process but this video is more or less just to give you guys a basic understanding of wicks I'm gonna dive into everything that I possibly can in this video that I can think of and then at the very end of this video I'll be sharing with you guys my personal experience on my candles and how I ended up wicking them okay so we need to start off just with the basics so what is a wick so a wick is usually that little cotton piece in the middle of a candle that you light on fire so whatever candle you have whether it's a cotton wick or a wood wick whatever you light on fire that's a wick so this is a huge part of the candle making process it's really challenging and is one of the more difficult parts of the process so just take your time and just try to take everything in as much as you can so if we're looking at the first part of what a wick is there's a couple different things that you'll need to know so there's two different kinds of sizes when it comes to a wick so there is the actual length of a wick which is how long it is so how long it is um, I believe it comes in a couple different lengths don't quote me on it but a six inch is pretty popular I believe there's also three inch and then there's also really small ones that are made specifically for tea lights um, but the most popular that you'll see is the six inches and ones that you'll probably use but just to kind of give you a reference these two jars so this one right here is a lot shorter than this one so you could probably just get a little three inch one for this one and then this one of course will need a little bit longer of the six inch so just to show you what it would be like if this was down um, at the bottom of the jar that's how much it would stick out above the top and then that would give you enough room to hold um, a cotter pin across and then be able to trim it to whatever size you want the second kind of size for a wick is the gauge of the wick so gauge is also the thickness of it so whether it's a lot thinner or a lot thicker um, that determines the melt pool of your candle so a melt pool is the amount of heated and liquid wax that goes around the diameter of your candle so for us candle makers we want to make sure that the diameter of the melt pool is reaching the sides of the candle so that it doesn't tunnel so when you have a wick that's too small it will start to tunnel down the center of the candle and it won't reach the sides um, at that point it will basically drown itself out and it won't be a flame anymore you can't have the candle because the wick is just too small but if you have a wick that's too big it will burn through really really quickly usually have a really high flame lots and lots and lots of flickering a lot of sooting sometimes and it's just not properly wicked for the candle so you have to try to find a really happy medium with what's going to be suitable for your candle now an important part to know and that's why this is a step or episode number three of my beginner series is that you need to have your wax and you need to have your jar down before you even try to find a wick so because of these two factors these will determine what kind of wick you should be using for your jars so what I recommend if you're a beginner you have no idea where to start you've seen all these different types of wicks or maybe you haven't seen any kind of wicks what I would recommend is to go to candlescience.com and go to their wick guide I will link it it will be the first link in the description box below so you guys can go right to that after watching this video and it will let you choose what kind of wax you're using and the diameter of your jar that you're using so what you're gonna want to do um, is if your website where you're getting your jars if it doesn't tell you what your diameter of your jar is you have to measure it yourself so what I would recommend doing is take, I should have grabbed the measuring tape, but if this is a measuring tape, you're going to hold it across right through the center of your candle and you're not going to want to go edge to edge. So outer edge to outer edge, you want to do inner edge to inner edge because you want to do the inner diameter of the jar and that will tell you what the diameter of your jar is. So for instance, this jar right here has a diameter of three and a quarter inches. Now, when you're looking at what these recommendations on Candle Science's Wick Guide, you're going to see a um, couple of letters and then a number or a few numbers. And um, this will probably be pretty confusing because you don't 
necessarily know what that means. So in all the series of wicks, so for instance, in Eco Wicks, um, they have between Eco Ones all the way up till Eco 16, but it goes Eco 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, so it'll go in twos after the Eco 1, and it goes all the way up until the highest gauge of 16. So what's really nice about a lot of these series, or I think all of them, is that all of the numbers, um, the bigger the number, the bigger the gauge of the wick, so that's helpful and it's not just a random number for different gauges. So um, for instance, in the HTP series, there's um, HTP 73, HTP um, 93, HTP 105, and then it goes up from there. So it's not always gonna be two, four, six, eight. Um, it's going to be whatever numbers that series has. But typically, and I believe, I don't wanna say 100% of the time, but probably 100% of the time, the higher the number, the bigger the gauge of the wick. Now, when it comes to wood wick candles, um, I do not actually know anything about wood wicking. So I apologize, but I don't know or have had experience with wood wicks, um, but I know that it does work similar in the sense that you do have to wick up or wick down. I believe you can also double wick when it comes to wood wicking, um, but there are a lot of resources online. I'll try to link some in the description box below. If you guys are interested in wicking your jars with a wood wick, I just don't wanna give you guys any information that I have not personally tested or I don't really know about. Um, I know basically all about these certain wicks with soy wax, so that's what my experience is on. But if you guys are interested in wicking with any other kind of wicks, there's lots of resources out there for you guys and there's lots of online candle making websites that will give you a little description of what the wick is so you guys will have a better understanding of where to go from there. Something else that wicks have a really big part in is the hot throw of your candle. So a hot throw is basically the scent and the smell that you get from a candle when it's burning. So if you can't smell it at all or you can smell it a little bit or you can smell a lot of it, wicks do have a big part in that. And what's really challenging is that you need to find the right wick for the jar but also that works well with your wax and the fragrance oil. So it's a big science experiment, as I've said so many times. I mean, this entire process is science. It's a huge science experiment. So that's what we're doing when we're testing and we're trying to find the right wicks. So that's why there's so many determining factors. So when you are testing specifically to find the right wick that is going to work well with your jars, um, you want to, one, keep your jars the same. Don't try to do different sizes of your jars because that's gonna throw it off completely. You also want to keep the wax the same and the fragrance oil the same. So you wanna keep the same percentage of fragrance oil and the same exact scent of the fragrance oil. So by doing it that way, you'll get a more accurate reading on trying to find the best wick for your jars. So in the candle making world, a rule to go by and this is just kind of a basics of what I've gathered and all the information that I've gathered from my candle community and um, different candle making websites is that these are the things that you're going to want to do and look for when it comes to wicking your candles. You want to find a wick that is going to create a full melt pool, which means that it's going to reach the sides of your jar. So I'm going to be using a three inch diameter jar as an example. So with the three inch diameter, you are going to want to find a wick that reaches the sides basically melts it all the way down within three hours of burning and creates about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch of a melt pool around the sides. So the amount of melted wax that's going to be sitting there as the flame is burning, you want that amount to be about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch deep after three hours. You also don't want to have much flickering of the flame. You don't want to have any sooting and you don't want much mushrooming. So mushrooming is where it creates this like little mushroom effect at the top of your wick when it's burning. After all of these have been said and done and all of the things that I have been learning about, I went crazy trying to find the absolute perfect candle that wouldn't do any of these things. I didn't want any sooting. I didn't want any mushrooming. I didn't want any flickering. I didn't want anything and I wanted a perfect hot throw and a perfect melt pool after three hours with this candle and I kind of went a little crazy trying to figure out exactly how to create the perfect melt pool of the candle and have all the boxes checked on everything else. So I went through tons and tons of different wicks. I did so many different wick testing 
I tried my very hardest to find a wick that would be perfect with my wax and with my jars. What ended up happening with my jars and with my candles and how I determined exactly how to wick my jars was after I went to my local candle supplier, which is California Candle Supply, and I had mentioned to one of the guys that was working there my struggles and what I was experiencing. So what I was experiencing is in my jars, specifically this one. What I would do is I would do an Ego 14 or an Ego 16 on this. An Ego 14 would not really cause too much flickering or sooting, but it would not even come close to burning down the sides and reaching full melt pool of this jar. But if I did an Ego 16, it would reach full melt pool in three hours, but there was a lot of soot if I didn't keep the wick trimmed really, really short. And even then, if I tried to keep the wick a little bit too short, then it would melt itself out because I trimmed it down way too short which is something that you guys will find out if you try to trim your wick way 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 too short the flame is going to be basically nothing it's gonna be a little baby flame even if it's a thicker gauge if you try to trim it really 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 short and like basically almost level with the wax it's not going to be able to produce a big enough flame um, to create that melt pool so this was my issue and this was something that was really really frustrating with me and um, another thing was with my smaller jars I did find a wick that worked but it didn't quite meet the sides full melt pool after the first burn and so I was like okay this wicks too small but then if I wicked up the flame got so big really early on after the first couple burns and it would start to soot a lot and I just and I didn't know what to do so I decided to ask for some advice from the guys that were working there and what he told me actually surprised me a bit so what he said was when you're wicking these jars first of all to double wick this so he said if the jar diameter reaches over three inches to double wick it so now I do two ego twos and um, it burns really 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 nicely really good hot throw and I haven't had any issues with it and then with my smaller jars so these are the 10 ounce Cali jars I was using an eco 14 with these because the eco 12 didn't reach full melt pool after two and a half three hours and he told me that's okay you don't necessarily always want to have it reach the full melt pool after that amount of time after the first few burns and that absolutely blew my mind because it kind of went against everything that I've learned so far with candle making because I always thought after the first burn you want to make sure that it's completely melted down and ever since I changed my mindset about that that it's okay if after the first couple burns it's not completely evenly melting down um, it's going to produce a better candle so it burns a lot slower it doesn't have as much like flickering it definitely does have some flickering to it but you have to think about it this way if your candle burns and melts hot and is able to after two and a half, three hours to burn the top, you have to think about it's going to burn even hotter when it gets down more. So the more it burns down, the hotter it's gonna get. So it's going to start to have a bigger flame and start to burn really, really hot. And that's what I experienced when I was using Eco 14s on the on these jars. So when I switched down and started doing Eco 12s and after, I believe it was after the third or fourth burn, it started to burn everything down and I could tell it was getting hotter the more it was burning but when I was trying to do a burn test to see how long these burned when I used an eco 14 it burned maybe 25 hours and then with this it burned 45 50 hours when I switched down and wicked down so it burns a lot slower even if it's not completely clean and smooth and super pretty um, you have to be thinking about the safety so having a smaller flame and making sure that you're trimming your wick in between each burn so that is also really important that you want to make sure that you're trimming the wick between each lighting that's just how candles were made to work you have to be thinking about that so that's what I was doing and every time I would test that it would um, just burn pretty slow and really nice and then it would burn just a little bit hotter the more it went down so you have to think about if it's if it's able to burn down the top that fast and be that hot, the more it goes down in the jar, it's gonna get even hotter. So these are just all things to think about. This was just my personal experience when it came to wicking my jars. I wanted to throw that in there for you guys just in case you guys have also been having the same issue. I highly recommend to test out your jars if you've been having issues with it not reaching full melt pool after you know so many hours of whatever the, di the diameter of your jar is. I would give it some time and test out a bunch 
bunch of different wicks all the way down. So you wanna start when you're testing and start all the way up and then go all the way down and use up the entire candle until the very end and see how it burns until the very end with whatever wick you're using. And make sure you're trimming the wick down in between while you're test burning. We cannot be miracle workers. I have seen some other posts of people talking about that they're able to do 24 hour burns and their melt pool is only a half an inch and there's barely been any wax that has been burned and their flame's perfect. And I gotta say congratulations because I could not do that. I can only make my candles as good as I possibly can and give as much um, information to help candle lovers and people who purchase candles be able to know how to take care of the candles and get the most out of them because we can't expect that we have to make a perfect candle even by the most irresponsible owner that's going to leave it on for 10 hours straight and never trim the wick i mean we can't expect that our candles are going to be perfect so i think that's all in today's video i feel like i could ramble on and on about this topic for so long but i really hope that you guys learned something from this video and that you can take my experience and hopefully do a little bit different testing than have than what you have been doing and again please test if you guys find wicks that burn really well that burn and melt the top and then they're not too hot when it burns more down please by all means go with that wick don't just do what I'm saying because it worked for me you have to do what's gonna work for you because my wax is different the fragrance oils that I'm using are different and you have to keep that in mind so um, the next beginners video is gonna be all about fragrance oil so stay tuned for that but if you guys like this video I would really appreciate it if you guys would give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already ready and follow me on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. You're always in the way. You always want to be in the spotlight. You need, you need to be trimmed. Huh? Tell them I need to be trimmed. Look at my face. Look at my face.